Um, next, we have Kendra. So let me introduce her. The um, topic today for her is going to be setting product development priorities. And Kendra was recently named one of State Scoop's top women in tech for 2017. She's a champion for digital best practices at both the government and industry levels. With a focus on usability, accessibility, and empathy, she's always looking for opportunities to educate and encourage others to improve their products. The poll she would like us to participate in says our backlog is prioritized by first come first serve or leadership preference or easiest to hardest or the product roadmap or I don't know or maybe it's not. So please vote and I'll read our responses. So 8% of us said that the, the product backlog is prioritized by first come first serve. 33% said leadership preference. Only 2% said easiest to hardest, 43% said product roadmap, and 14% said I don't know or it's not. Welcome, Kendra. Thank you. Wow, that was great. We had a decent percentage of um, product roadmaps, so excellent. So I'm gonna totally switch gears from the last one there and talk for a few minutes about um, strategies for setting that product development priorities. Um, so just a quick, Introduction to me, my name is Kendra. I work for the state of Georgia in our digital services team. As a director of product, I manage the roadmap for our enterprise Drupal 7 content management system. So I keep the pulse of that whole system. So I plan initiatives and enhancements, oversee maintenance, manage our training and support efforts, and so on. But more importantly, that means making sure the product we provide meets the needs of our agencies and their constituents. Um, so for context, that system supports the state of Georgia's flagship site at georgia.gov, along with about 80 agency websites across the executive branch and some elected officials. So to do that well, my team has to balance an always growing wish list of features and tweaks from agency customers, right? Like we kind of all see that growing wish list of things we want. Um, but we also need to keep an eye on the changes in device use and industry best practices so we can improve the platform for the needs of citizen stakeholders, those that don't often have a real voice in those feature requests. So this balancing act of prioritizing the roadmap for internal and external stakeholders is what that product strategy is all about. So what does that look like, right? So digital product strategy is realizing that you can't, nor should you, build every feature request that hits your backlog. Now this may sound obvious, but that means planning a way forward while keeping in mind how that will impact multiple stakeholder groups at multiple levels, right? So from leadership down to the citizens actually interacting with a lot of this. So how do you keep from drowning in feature requests and avoid the pit of reactionary development? For that, we need a framework around how we prioritize that roadmap. To quote the great Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, you can't always get what you want. So sometimes we have to say no to feature requests that would be a huge lift for minimal benefit. So we trade off momentary wins and fancies in exchange for making sure the audience has what they need to access the key information and services that we're providing. It's important for us to approach future requests with a problem first mindset, not solution first. So we seek solutions to agency problems, right? We're not just jumping right in and saying, hey, what module does that thing my customer asked for? We say, okay, what's the problem they're trying to solve with that proposed solution that they're providing to us, right? What's the best way to meet their goal? So an example, this is what we hear all the time. We have agencies come to us saying something like, hey, we need to see all of your themes, the skins that they can choose from for their design. Or they'll say, we need a new website redesign. Now our reflexive response, right, would be to jump right in and to, to a design conversation. Like, oh, here's our list of themes, or hey, you know, tell me what other sites you like, or what features do you like? But if we take a step back and we start to ask them to state their problem, usually we find that they're contacting us because they're overwhelmed by the amount of outdated content on their website, right? So that's website content that they manage. They're overwhelmed by the information that's outdated and they're jumping to a design solution. So the real solution they need in that case is a content audit or a content cleanup, right? Not a new theme or a new website. So my point here, right, is let's jump into fixing things only once, once we know what's broken. Uh, if the toilet's leaking, we don't need to start by repainting the bathroom. At that point, it doesn't matter that you hate the color of your walls. You need to turn off the water and get the you know what off the floor. Uh, so for a lot of you, this is going to be a culture shift, right? It's a complete pivot in mindset. It's not easy to break free from that instinct to just answer the question that was asked or to fix something that someone asked you to fix without really probing to understand what that problem is. 
Um, so in response to a feature request, we need to follow up with probing questions, right? We need to say, well, what was your problem? What is it that we're hoping to accomplish? What's your current process, right? How are you meeting that need right now? And then understand where are the gaps in that process? And then how will we know when we've succeeded? Once you have a handle on that problem, you can start to understand the options for addressing it and chart out the priority for a solution. So what's the severity of this problem? Who does it impact? How many people does it impact? Um, who can fix it? And what's the estimated lift to fix it? So then we can begin to work out a solution and determine where this falls on our roadmap. So we're going to start talking about, you know, this prioritization framework. How do I kind of figure out what to prioritize and where that falls? Um, we can do something like this for framework for any new feature requests, large enhancements, or bug reports, and so on. So what we start with is, you know, is this request going to help our users, right? The people interacting, the citizens interacting with the service. Does it help the agencies, the ones that are, you know, the business owners of it that are working on this product? Um, is it future focused? Is this going to help us in the long term? And is it going to provide the best value for the time and lift that it's going to require? Um, so a couple of years ago, our team launched an accessibility initiative to improve our platform code and themes to meet WCAG 2.0 level 2A standards. So from a prioritization perspective, here's how that would look on our priority chart, right? So first, does it help the users? Absolutely, it does. In fact, I often argue that making, con making code more accessible doesn't only help people with disabilities, it helps everybody, right? We're improving our SEO, we're just making something more usable. So yes, it's going to help our users. Does it help our agency partners? Well, again, yes, anything that helps our users does help those agency partners. And if we're improving accessibility, we're probably gonna prevent some of them from being sued, but they don't feel it the same way, right? Like they don't really notice or care if we've changed it. So we sort of move that back on the list. The next one is, is it future focused? Again, absolutely. When we improved the platform for WCAG 2.0 standards, we knew that eventually that would be the standard, but it wasn't there yet. So we're being proactive and not reactive. And then does it provide the best value? We were able to do a lot of this in-house. We partnered with a couple of other agencies to get this work done. So we were able to do this with overall minimal lift compared to the value that we were providing. So that's what this one looks like, right, as far as the lift for this initiative. So you can see how that compares to another internal initiative for performance enhancements. Again, yes, improving performance helps the end users, but agencies really don't care how long it's taking those end users to load a page. So for them, it's not a huge priority. Um, you know, is it future focused? Well, we're working on it for this platform, but we're going to have to start all over again the next time around. So just sort of thinking about how that impacts. And then you can see how that compares to a design and layout upgrade for our platform. So that's something where we had agencies saying that they needed more flexibility, they needed to be able to move boxes around, they want better control over their content. Not necessarily helping the end users access that content, but more scratching an itch for those agencies. So as we kind of talk through where that falls, we might still decide to prioritize that because if we're scratching the itch for these agencies who are frustrated, that prevents them from you know, feeling like they need to go spend a lot of money to build something brand new, right? We can kind of meet them halfway. So this can be useful even if you think through the small requests, right? So every change adds complexity. So even the seemingly small requests may have cascading results. Now the purpose of this exercise is to cut down on the complexity of the process and to distill it to some key goals. So if that sounds useful to you, I've made this available as a PDF that you can download and print and I'll tweet this link and share it on Slack at the end of my talk. So I've got what, five more minutes to go. Over the last six years, we've made a lot of small enhancements and improvements, um, along with regular bug fixes and module upgrades to the product. But in tandem with those small things, we've also prioritized these broader initiatives with a bigger strategic impact based on the mindset that feeds that prioritization framework that we talked through. So these things, things like making sites mobile friendly, accessible to WCAG 2.0 standards, and improving page load speed and overall performance. Those didn't come in from feature requests from agencies. These were intrinsically driven because we're watching the industry and we're responding proactively to the needs of that broader audience of citizens in search of government services. What's key then is that as we complete initiatives, as we improve on our code, we have to build those principles into all of our future development. Our team has found value in prioritizing these development guidelines as our default expectations for anything new that we build based on those completed initiatives. 
So this decision is based on an understanding of our audience and our conviction that government is responsible for serving all citizens equally. Right, caps on citizens' mobile data plans or living in a rural area or having a physical or mental disability should not be barriers to access government services online. So we use these development principles to set us that baseline for providing the best effort for access to our services. Now meeting these principles in our product development still requires intentionality at every stage. And our requirement stage is our design, our development, our testing, our content management and training. These are not part of a default mindset for most developers. So if we don't keep up on them as checkpoints in our user stories and development sprints, and if we don't test for them at each cycle, they're going to be forgotten. If these development principles match your goals at all, again, I've created a um, high level checklist of things to look forward to meet those principles and get you started. And this one's just a Google Doc that you can copy and update as you see fit. Um, but again, it's just a way to sort of start thinking through ways to have your checkpoints for principles. So I'm going to retweet that link as well and share it on Slack. Honestly, then I could talk about any of this all day. Um, I and other team members have blogged about these and other related topics on our team's website. So you may want to check that out as well. Um, and if there's anything that struck a chord, definitely let's chat. Um, and I think that's it. Man, two minutes to go. <laughs> that was awesome, Kendra. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um